Good morning guys and welcome to the channel. Um, this is just a very quick hobby update of a War of the Roses 28mm project that I've been working on for about 5 months. Um, I haven't been into wargaming probably since about the age of 12. That was all Fantasy Games Workshop um, stuff. And uh, I've always been a bit of a lurker when it comes to historical wargaming. I didn't know where to begin, I didn't know about the different types of sizes and models you can get. Um, and I started watching a chap called Seventh Sons Videos, which does these fantastic battle reports from his uh, wargaming games. Um, I'll post a link to that below in the description. And uh, watching these videos, I got absolutely hooked on this stuff, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Um, there seems to be something a bit more personal about doing historical wargaming miniatures. I find it's quite a lot, you have to do quite a bit of research if you want to get some authentic liveries done. Um, and I got some boxes of Perry Miniatures, which are these guys right here. So these boxes I found were insanely cheap for what the, um, how much you get inside them. There's about £20 a box and you can get two units of, um, of Foot Knights in this box. And you can do Bill and Bo as well. I've got some other stuff, but let's, uh, I'll show you what I've done so far. And let's get cracking. So I started off doing a bit of research into the different sides of the War of the Roses. Um, if you're not sure about uh, the history of the War of the Roses, well, the War of the Roses was essentially a series of wars that displaced many, many kings on the throne of England. And it was basically England versus the rest of England. So this is my Richard Neville command base, and I've got these flags off Pete's flags. Um, this is all Perry miniatures. These guys are actually metal figures which you can buy separately on the website. And this is a couple of billmen that have had spare leftover sprues because, like I said again, they're fantastic value for money. You can get two units of these guys out, I'll show you in a second, and you'll have tons left over for um, kit bashing on the little bits and bobs. The basing itself comes from Geek Scenery Online. I'll, again, the link for that will be in the description. Um, this is like a ready to made base, so all there is is glue. I have a bit of this base chucked on top. It's left to dry overnight, and then I've added these tufts and small flowers there, which you can get quite cheap as well. But yeah, um, this is my first couple of paint jobs that I've started doing. Um, these are all contrast paints with a GW metallic air and dry brush over the top. Little details picked out there in brass. Um, I was quite happy with the way they turned out for not painting for so many years. Um, I've made quite a lot of mistakes, but honestly, once you put them all on the same board, you won't notice them. Um, I've done this command base in a rectangle, which is 60 by 40 millimeter bases. The reason for that is because I intend to do an Edward Plantagenet command base who would be the main command of my force, which means this guy can be popped into a men at arms unit and just act as an all captain, you know, just within the ranks. So that's him. Um, I started working on his men at arms unit. So these are the billmen for the Bill and Bow units. So I've tried to do very, very special his. Um, livery emblem there which is the broken or beaten branch which is supposed to just my branch looks it's supposed to look like that a little stick with little bits coming off it and i've just <laughs> stabbed that on there so uh yeah um these this flag actually came with the perry mitch's box so you can actually see that inside and let's see if i've got one to show you so every time you order some perry miniatures you're going to get a very handy little little sheet like this in the box and it will go through the units a bit about their, you know, where they can be used from in Europe, their kind of shield designs or liveries, and then it could be a bit of information about their loads of really cool history tidbits and if you to read to get stuck into. I was reading through this mercenaries one, I thought, you know, doing a project on the Italian wars would be a really fun thing to do, but you know, that's the trouble with getting like hooked on plastic is you're going to get hooked on different projects and other people are going to show you cool models that they've done. You think, oh man, I need to start that immediately, but stay focused. Stay focused is the main thing I'm going to say. Um, but yeah, they will come with these little flags inside, which they're quite shiny. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there you go. They're quite shiny. But if you cut these out, you can stick them on to um, the, you know, pike or, or spear bases. Um, they do turn up a little bit shoddy, but after using some army painter matte finish, it takes the shine off it quite a bit. I mean, not massively, but enough that you can get away with it, you know? So that is the billman for my bill and bow rank. So it's again, it's going to be five five models to a base, at 60 uh, millimeters across. So that'll be one unit there, one unit of bowmen there. And Perry miniatures come with a variety of different models and textures, uh, sorry, models that you can use. Like the sprues I thought were absolutely fantastic. So these guys used to sculpt for Games Workshop back in the day um, when they used to do kind of historical models. Um, probably way before a lot of people's time. 
and uh, they then went off to make their own company and they now do a variety of these fantastic models. So again, this is all GW paints. This actually got quite a bit of shine on it, actually. I didn't really notice that before. Um, but yeah, so two of these either side of the of the uh, Billman there will make up the unit. So look a bit like that. And this way, you know, you can move things around a little bit if you're playing different game styles, etc, etc. But I learned this watching the Seventh Sons videos. They're really, in, in, um, you know, uh, informative about how to base these yourselves. Because obviously when I started this, I have no idea what I'm doing. So these are primarily going to be for the Hail Caesar rule set, which I haven't actually played yet. I'm just still working on this project. So we've got those guys there. We've got another Billman command base. This was one of the first ones that I've done. And I had some extra models, so I've crammed them in there to make it look a bit more a bit more meaty. Got a little guy with a little trumpet there. And again, I've tried to do the broken branch, beaten branch on there. And then we've got a unit of men at arms. So to be the command base. I've done this guy in a little bit of a brass kind of texture because it's a little play around with the, the metals that I've got. Um, I'm pleased with it. It's a bit, it's a bit Hollywood, I think. <laughs> it's like you know, br a whole brass plated armor is a bit weird, but you know, it gives it a bit of color. I started messing around at this point with um, colors on the helmets because I want to be a bit more of the livery colors all over them. I was trying different colors for the clothing to see what works best because I was getting a bit weird painting everyone with like green and red trousers because it was looking a bit like a, I don't know, a little bit like a cartoon. But I think these worked out all right. And again, got another little Pete's flag there, which I thought was really good. Uh, and then we've got the men at arms for each side of these. Again, tried to put the liveries on there. Bit of, bit of flourishes on the metals. And then these guys there. So you can do um, a bit of research online to find out what kind of colors that they used. Um, so I'm trying to go obviously for Richard Neville's retinue, I've gone for the red and whites. And um, again, I'm going to be going on with this guy for bloody ages. Um, Seventh Son obviously mentioned you can find other people who are taking part in these battles with them. So although Richard Neville is going to be the um, the commander, I've got a men at arms unit done in John De La Pole's colours, which is the gold and blue. And he is going to be leading a group of men at arms under Richard Neville. And again, got some peace flags on there. So that is two units of Bill and Bow, and then two units of men at arms, which is four units there for his command base. But I wanted to judge it up a little bit, so I got a box of the Perry Miniatures uh, mercenaries, which you can you can get actually quite a lot out of. So I started working on, I think this guy, <laughs> I made up that this guy's name is Francis de Amboise, and he's from Upper Burgundy, and he's come to England to sell his handgunners um, for battle. Um, and this is using the Rick Priestley rule set for the expanded supplement for Hail Caesar's units. And then Seventh Son has been working on his own um, Google Doc, which is why this is a small unit of handgunners, and they've got their own special rules when they, you know, get guys hit well over the christmas break i've managed to get myself a whole load more models so i have been working on so these guys so my painting skills have increased ever so slightly so these look a little less cartoony there's less less mistakes on these guys but i've got another couple of units of um bill and bow try to get little 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 details done whereas before I would just paint over the whole lock you wouldn't notice but I've tried to catch a little bit more detail on these guys obviously I haven't got the flags done up for these ones yet I have had these delivered but yeah I'm just waiting to get these flags done on these guys and off and I'll finish these ones off with um, some finish but I have actually started working on a second unit of mercenaries so these guys are gonna be starting off with my mercenary Scottish pikemen and I have managed to use some leftover metal Perry miniatures guys to kind of because I only had enough pikemen to do I think it was like 18 but you need about 24 to do four bases of pikemen so I've managed to mix in some metallic Perry miniatures guys in there as kind of like just beefed up Scottish dudes ready for battle and I've been slowly been working on these and I've very quickly realized that the burnout mark for me is about eight eight miniatures in one go so I put these on the little stick of four and I just paint a batch of eight in one go and then I'll go take a break, go do something else, play some video games and whatnot. Otherwise I get burnt out very, very quickly. So 
that's what I'm working on at the moment. I'm waiting for some um, a big round command base. As I have this, which I'm really, really, really excited about. So, Perry managed to do some metal, metal bits. So, what I've got here is I'm going to be using this guy as my Edward and Pagenet. Because if you don't know a lot about War of the Roses history, just go read up about this guy. He's an absolute Chad boss of, <laughs> of a future king. You know, he was really fit, physically fit and an intimidating man at a young age. He got stuck into battle all the time. So I really want to make this one a little bit special because I think he's an absolute dope character to have for War of the Roses project. So I'm going to have this guy leading a command base. So he's going to be one big round base. And he's going to have with him a couple of bannermen who are going to be holding up his lovely peach flags banners which i'll show you in a moment so these guys will be clipped into there and he's going to have a, another spare captain that i've got behind him as well so there'll be four four of these units on this command base um all judged up together with edward kind of leading the pack there but it should look quite an intimidating little command base once i've got the flags done and they're all painted up um but i'm waiting for that round base to get delivered before i start working that so we're going to just continue with the um with mercenaries and because why not i've also ordered a couple of um oh god it's actually all stuck together one second so I don't know if you can see that in there, but what I've ordered is a lovely late medieval cannon set. So this isn't the Bombard, this is one of the smaller cannons. Oh, look at that, it's wonderful. Bit of fluff on there. Fantastic. Oh yeah, that's really cool. So this is going to be the cannon itself. It's very hard to see when you're not painted this up. But these are the really early stages of cannon use in um, European medieval warfare. Um, but maybe not yet. But I'm going to finish this first and get this out of the way. Um, the reason that I've done basically two... I don't know what you would usually call them brigades, I guess, in wargaming. Or we call them battles for um, all the roses. So I've got got the Richard Neville and he's got four units so he's got two units of bow, two units of men at arms, one unit of mercenaries, one cannon and then we're going to have Edward Plantagenet and he's going to have his two, his two units of bill and bow, his two units of men at arms, a mercenary pipe and unit and some cannon and the reason that I've done that is because later on in the war um, Richard Neville actually fought against Edward Plantagenet because he essentially married a chav and not not um, Richard's choice so yeah the reason I've done it that way is because if I go to a mate's place and want to play some battles I've got two divisions essentially to fight against each other Richard Neville versus Edward Plantagenet because that did actually happen later on in the war um, so I've got like two I can have a small skirmish with a friend using these two divisions or if I go to play someone who's got a big Lancashian force I've got like a huge force I can put on the table can have a really good fantastic game but yeah, so um, that's it so far. I'm actually going to continue painting after this video to get those mercenaries finished before my bases arrive for the um, Edward Plagenet and then I can start working those cannons and that'll be all done. But yeah, so far I've actually thoroughly enjoyed this project. Um, there was quite a lot of burnout periods where I've tried to do too many models at once. But um, find, yeah, for me it's eight. Eight models. So I'll do eight models at a time. It'll take me a couple of hours and then I'll um, give it a rest, go play a video game or something. But yeah, really, really chuffed with these guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video and looking at the little projects I've been working on. But yeah, thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed the video and speak soon.